David says, question, Akil, are the, uh, the markets have been seemingly slow this year. Is it normal as in going through a cycle or unusual? Um, it's, it's normal. Uh, yeah, the, the market, um, I've experienced very, very fast markets, very slow markets, very uh, markets that consolidate, markets that trend. So it's just uh, the market has different moods. Um, and this year has just been a slow year. And I, I keep referencing 2014. Uh, 2014 was the, the last extremely slow year that I remember. Um, now, I haven't seen anything like 2000. I got started at a weird point, the recession. So that's kind of its own little deal. Um, but yeah, it's it's normal. It's 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 normal in the fact that it happens. It's normal. It's normal in the fact that it happens. Um, but I'm a believer in that the markets are always changing. Um, always expect the the unexpected. Um, and you just have to you have to adjust. And that's the difference between good traders and bad traders. Uh, bad traders are they kind of they don't make adjustments. They think that everything will work exactly the same uh, forever. Um, where good traders, they understand how to read the market. They understand how to understand or how to know the story that they're being told. And they're they're able to willing and able to adjust their trading style um, with the market conditions. So, yeah, very slow year. Um, I agree. Very slow year, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it not normal. Um, but just because there really is no normal. Um, Davis, I did six years of back testing and notice opportunities slowed this year. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Again, this has been my opportunity. I, I'm, I've taken about half of the opportunities that I typically take this year. So I don't know what my number's at right now, but usually at this point, I have double of what I've taken. And a lot of that is just due to the reduction in, in volatility. There are a lot of day trading opportunities that I can't take because just the there's not profit available. Yeah. So it's it's not normal in a sense of what is typically happening, but it's normal in a sense that the market goes through these stages. Yeah. I also expect a faster summer. <laughs> summer is usually ridiculously slow. Uh, not necessarily bad, but slow. I expect a faster sum summer. I, we have a lot going on. Um, I think we're going to see some movement this summer. We have a lot going on out in the, the fundamental world. So I'm expecting a fast summer. Fast being a relative term, of course. Euro dollar on the 60. And I'll tell you what, just on, on, the, on, the, on the subject, this is why it's important that you don't just test one year, guys. This is why it's important. You just don't test what happened last year in the market. And if your strategy works, you think it's going to work that way forever. You need to test over different market conditions. Because if you have a, if you are a trend following trader, you have a, a trend trading strategy and you have some very directional markets, how do you think your strategy is going to perform? Yeah, it's going to perform really, really well. If you are a trend trader and the markets are directional and they're and they're booming, you're going to perform very, very well. Why? Because the markets are rolling. So if you've tested a single year and that single year happened to be a very trending year, your back testing numbers aren't going to tell the true story. And, and that's a problem that so many people don't. Well, most people don't go through the back testing process to begin with. That's an issue in its own right. Right. Most people don't backtest to begin with, but many people will will backtest, but not backtest enough. They'll they'll backtest enough just to make themselves feel good. Right. They'll backtest, you know, a couple months and be like, ah, the numbers look good. Let's get at it. And then they're smacked in the face with the harsh reality of trading that things aren't always that way. So those who, uh, you know, some backtesting is always better than, than none backtesting. Um, but you got to backtest through different market conditions. You have to, you know, th and th this, this is what pisses me off, right? Because, you know, we, we had this conversation a while ago about, um, I did a few podcasts on people talking about backtesting is pointless. 
right? You should, you should just, you should, back testing is pointless because it's not the same thing as live trading. And you're right. It's not the same thing as live trading, right? In live trading, you have something in front of you called the hard right edge, right? You see, you see, you see the right side of your chart, right? What do you see on the right side of my chart? Empty black space, right? You're looking off the cliff, there's a mist, and you have no idea what's down there. That's scary as hell, man. It, 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 it is a lot easier to identify when you're back testing when you know what's happening, right? When you're looking back, and you're like, oh, oh, look, I can go back, right? So from, a, <clears throat> from an, an analysis perspective, right, back testing is different. It is different, right? It's easier when you have that safety net of being able to scroll back. It's hard to trade live when you have this open space, this unknown. It makes your mind start to wonder. And, you know, the mind, the mind can do some weird things. Same thing with demo trading. Demo trading is completely different than back testing. Demo trading is completely different than live trading. Because there's no emotional attachment in demo trade, right? You ever get mad when you lose a demo trade? Like really mad? Probably not because, you know, you didn't lose any money. You may get upset like, oh, it didn't work out but you don't actually lose any money. When you lose live money, it's a different story, right? Money is a massive emotional trigger. Losing live money is, a, is much different than losing demo money, right? But for these people that say you don't need the back test, you should just, you should just trade, your, trade it live and learn on the fly, right? Well, how the hell do you know if it works? How do you know if it works if you don't backtest it? How do you know what you're doing now is going to work six years from now? What if you started trading a, a, the perfect strategy at the perfect time? And it's working great for you for the first year. Because you've caught a trendy market. And guess what? It's like the stock market, right? When the stock market's trending, right? You can just buy anything at any given time and you'll make money. There's no skill involved. Just buy anything at any given time, you'll make money, right? <laughs> long, long term. But the thing is, most people aren't in trading for the short term. You guys are in it as a long term investment, whether it's managing your own finances and trying to beat the bank like Gabby, whether it's developing a, a business, right? It's a long-term goal. You have to, it's a marathon, right? You can't just sprint out in front and die for the last 25 miles, right? You've got to be able to maintain throughout the entire thing. And let me ask you this, any of you guys ran a marathon? Am I the only, only idiot that, that did it twice? I, not, a, not a chance. Well, I can tell you what, right? There's a point in a marathon where your body just gives up, right? For me, it, it happens at mile, it happens at mile 12 or mile 16 every time. Mile 16 every time, right? My first marathon, I never, I never trained. I think the longest run I did was like a 10 mile run, right? So I had no idea what it felt like to run more than 10 miles. How do you think my body reacted after 10 miles? Do you think it was good? No. It, it started to feel a little different, but more importantly, I didn't know how to manage it, right? Physically is one thing. You're, you're going you're gonna to die and feel pain. That's part of it. But mentally, mentally, I didn't know how to manage it. What, what, is, this, what is this cramping feeling? What is this tiredness? What is this mental fatigue of being out for two hours? However, once you've gone through it, right? Once you've gone through your first marathon, right? When I did my second one, I approached it completely different. Now my body still gave up on me, don't get me wrong. 
But mentally, I knew how to deal with it. I approached it differently. I knew what adjustments to make when my body was telling me those signs, right? I knew that when my body felt like this, oh, I had to change up the cadence so I don't cramp up. I knew when I can surge a little bit and pick up the pace. I knew when I had to slow down and get more oxygen in, right? You can make those adjustments with experience. And there's only two ways to gain experience in market in, 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 in trading. Three ways, I guess. One, you can just trade live from right now and you get hands-on experience the other the, uh, as you go. Spend the next five years gaining experience in the market. You may not make it five years. You may go broke, but you can you can go for it. Or you can back test. You can go back five years, gain five years of experience through back testing. It's not going to give you the same experience of uh, as trading live, but it's going to give you perspective. It'd be the equivalent of like uh, you know reading a book on marathon trading, right? Not the same as you actually running it, but at least you're gaining some insights on what to do, what not to do. Hey, Akil, don't go out in seven seven minute pace for the first mile. Okay, yeah, yeah. What do you think the third the third way is, right? One is trade live only, just go out and do it. Don't train for the marathon, just show up and run. See if you make it. The other way is do your basically your back testing on it. Read, watch movies, watch videos, right? The third way is a blend of both. Gain your experience through reading through watching videos, you're quote unquote back testing for marathon training, but then by actually doing it as well. So now you have the learned experience and the actual experience combining together. Read up on what you need to do and then actually do it. And that's gonna cut down on that learning curve. The third way is don't run marathons. (laughs) You're making me scared to go live. Well, yeah, it's it's scary, but you gotta you gotta do it. You gotta do it if you want to achieve your dreams. No different from any any business owner. The first time you take that business loan, right? The both the first time if you're taking a loan out for your business, the first time you sign on that dotted line, you're you're taking a loan and and you know the guy's smiling at you like, oh, you're gonna owe us so much money. But you're banking on yourself. It's scary, but you got you gotta trust yourself. You gotta trust that this this business is gonna work, it's gonna pay off. And same thing with live trading. Now, with you guys, you you guys have the benefit, uh, uh, Trump should be speaking right now. Here's the benefit that you guys have, right? We're not selling you a dream here, right? Have you ever heard any of us say, oh yeah, just trade live, you're gonna be a millionaire right away, right? How, how, long, <laughs> how long do we tell you you should typically take? Yeah, what do we say? Anywhere between six to 18 months, guys. Well, why would you tell someone that? Well, that's the truth. Now, everyone's different. But typically between 6 to 18 months is when you really start to find yourself as a trader. Right? You can be successful. Right? But, but typically it starts off as like being a little bit successful. Kind of just like going up and down. Right? Where you're like, you're, you're making a little bit of money, but you're, you're kind of just breaking even. Just like, just like a business, Right? If you can break even in your first year in a a new business, God bless, you're on the right track. (laughs) And then you go from breaking even to kind of like making a little bit of money, nothing special, but you know, you're making a 1% a month. You had a 10% year, which is nothing to get crazy about, but you know, it's it's 10%, right? You're doing just as good as your investment banker, right? Your mutual fund manager and whatnot. And then you start to really find yourself as you gain experience, as you take your back-tested experience and you combine it with your your live experience in the market, about a year, a year and a half in, it starts to click and you really start to find your groove. You start to find that you're you're seeing the markets differently. You start to find your strategy. You're making the adjustments necessarily to trade it and you're, you're, you're locked in and then you start to really see it. 
then that business starts to boom. Now you're trading in the zone. And yeah, it took you a year and a half. But it's because of that combined experience. If you didn't have that combined experience, it might have taken you five years. And I'd much rather be in the market breaking even for a year than losing money for a year. Would you guys agree? But it's, ha it's having that combined experience. And George said, the SMB guy, Mike Belfiore says one to three years. Yeah, I truthfully believe that. It, again, it, it took me about, I always say between, I, I say two years, um, but it's probably like a year and a half after I started trading the right way to finally kind of get in my zone. And I say two years because, you know, I, I do things in quarters, as mentioned earlier. So like, I, you know, once I was trading good, I'm like, well, this can still be a, this can still be an anomaly. So let, let's give myself another six months to really say it in my head. But it's a process. But I think the best thing you can do is understand the process. If you, if you understand what it takes, then it eliminates some of that frustration. You, you hate to say it, but it's like if, like if you're a, a rookie athlete, if you understand that the rookie season is going to have its ups and downs, you're not going to be a, a superstar right away, then you can approach it a lot differently than, you know, having the expectation that I'm going to come in and, and, and be a super trader right away. Because when you have that expectation, there's really nowhere to go but back down, right? If you start all the way at the top, at least mentally in your mindset, there's, there's nowhere to go but worse. And that's not fun. Hmm.